Dear audience, try to imagine more than 10 billion people on our planet, crowded cities, and fossil fuels are about to be used up. That's what our future might look like. And this is why we need sustainable and smart cities. Well, before we start, I'd like to welcome you all to our presentation about building sustainable and smart cities, challenges for industries and societies. We are Jule and Fionn, and we are from the RBZ team. Also on our team are Angelina, Dominique, Felix, Jeff, and Nico. On, and also our two teachers, Mrs. Ottmeyer and Mrs. Wiesenbeck, who contributed, contributed to our project and all our working sessions. So much about our team. Smart city. The topic smart city con uh, contains a lot of aspects, as you can see here on the slide. For example, mobility, industries, energy, and more. We focus on the aspect green energy. A smart city connects all those points uh, based on a digital conjunction. The goal is a city with a clear concept that has an efficient and technologically advanced plan of a city with a green and social focus. So as the statistics shows, the world population will increase about 2.5 billion up to 9.73 billion people until 2050. Uh, consequently, the process of urbanization is still continuing. Nowadays, 51% of the world's population lives in a city, and that percentage will rise up till 70%. Um, furthermore, the power demand will increase rapidly. Therefore, we see the problem in the gapless energy accommodation when the fossil energy sources are slowly start to fade and nuclear power is not an option. That's why we elaborated an idea that should decrease the problem. The solution to our problem are self-sufficient islands among the city. Our idea of an island is that it's undefined in space. The island consists of a center, the red circle, and the surrounding, the green circle. The center in our example is the Provincial. It's responsible for the green energy production for itself and the surrounding. Um, we believe that buildings like the Provincial are particularly suited because of their large rooftop areas for the installing of renewable energy sources like solar cells. Um, the surrounding con can contain as many households as the center can provide for. In this example, the surrounding would be the apartment units in Sachauerstraße, Hopfenstraße, Hamstraße, and Gablenstraße. The island, the island should produce energy 24 seven, through example, for example, through solar cells or geothermic. But the center just needs the energy during office hours, so mainly Mondays to Fridays from uh, 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. During that time, the energy demand of the households is low. But after office hours, the energy demand of the business is low, but the building is still producing uh, energy which would stay unused. But, uh, but the energy demand of the households will increase rapidly after office hours because everyone gets home. So that's why we see the big advantage of our island. The center should use its own produced energy first uh, for its demand. And if a surplus occurs, so mainly after office hours, it will be submitted into a grid uh, that connects the center with its surrounding. We like to call it the island grid. It's necessary to create the island. Otherwise, uh, the center is submitting a surplus of power into the public grid and a lot of disadvantages are occurring, like co-use cost. But it's also necessary that both, system, uh, that both island parts are still connected to uh, the public grid. Because in case of a bad weather, the center cannot provide for itself and its surrounding constantly. To ensure a flawless regulation out of both power networks, a smart system is needed. Such a system is needed in both parts of the island. Um, both systems have to work together and therefore they have to exchange all the collected information. Yeah, let's talk about how this might work out. 
For this idea to work out, a smart system is necessary that is able to figure out on the one hand the energy demand and on the other the surplus energy from the certain office building. Therefore we need something like a card system that we already have in hotels for example. Means that whenever there's someone leaving or coming into the office, the, uh, the system notices, okay, now there's someone in it or not, or the energy is needed or not. It also recognizes how many office facilities receive energy. In addition to that, the system recognizes the amount of energy so that the system figures out how much energy is available for the island. In case the renewable energy isn't enough, there's still the possibility to receive the energy or electricity from the public power network. Especially outside of the office hours, this system idea reaches its most efficient summit. Well, now you might ask yourself, uh, now you might ask yourself how households know which energy they are supposed to use. For this, we have a simple answer. The private households have to have a smart system as well. They both are connected and work together. They exchange information in order not to find, not only to find the best, but also to, uh, an ecological and substantial um, solution. Energy cooperation contracts. They are very important in order for this idea to be successful. They create a statutory basis between provider and customer. In our example, the provider is the provincial, and the customer are the apartment units in the surrounding. Some substantial regulations are, for example, who's the owner, means there are two possible ways to answer this question. The first one is that there's a cooperation between the business and the, apart uh, the owner of the apartment units and the surrounding. In this case, they share the costs, benefits, and uh, profit distribution. The second way is the business is the only owner of the system, means that they have to carry all the costs. The last question is, um, what are the terms of acceptance and submitting? means that the households are committed to this idea or this system, means that they are supposed or they have to take the energy if there is the surplus energy. So they can't say no or yes to it. They have to. The main benefit of IR Island is that it's creating an independent unit that can provide uh, in, for itself in case of a blackout or a terroristic attack. So to create as many islands uh, in a city as possible, there have to be incentives that encourage the population and the business to participate. Uh, for the businesses, we came up with the following incentives. Um, they would reduce their electricity expense. They would receive a motorization, which means tax benefits. Uh, the acquisition would receive state funding. And the business would improve their image due to being an eco-minded business. Uh, for the private households, we thought of the following. Um, they would also reduce their electricity expense and they should receive tax benefits. In the end, I can just say a vote for our yes solution because self-sufficient islands will be indispensable of a smart city in order to fulfill the needs of the urbanization. Thank you for your attention. Thank you, and um, please, the experts, come to the stage and also take a seat yeah. for having our discussion now. So, yeah, Thorsten Grenz also. <laughs> take a seat here today. <laughs> you have a free choice. <laughs> please. I'm sitting here. <laughs> Change places. <laughs> so first of all, congratulations. One can feel that energy is not only your topic but your spirit. Because <laughs> well, I think it's worth a big applause because you addressed a topic that is very well, let's say complicated, with a lot of market actors, with a lot of your regulation, with a lot of business models. So please, again, a big applause for this team. So 
for our commentators, you already know them from the previous section, and um, we have another time from yesterday. You already know Thorsten Grenz, managing partner of Kimbria and professor of economics and social sciences at Christian Albrechts University and board of Trägerwerk AG, so also, again, the business point of view here. And I would invite you to first um, give your impression and maybe um, comments on this presentation. You have a microphone near you? Yes, yeah, you said, wow. <laughs> uh, as you said, uh, it's an important uh, issue and a very topical uh, uh, one. Uh, a lot of people uh, are thinking about uh, future energy or electricity uh, supply. Is already a hint. Uh, you've been talking about electricity, not uh, energy. So, uh, what about heat? Um, it's 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 a it's a complex thing. And uh, listening to the presentation, uh, I was somewhat stunned, uh, seeing that you advocate islands, uh, contrary uh, to exchange or supply through a larger, specialized, usually more effective and efficient uh, installations, you would kill uh, offshore wind, uh, because apparently it does not fit uh, into an island. You're killing uh, wind altogether, because you rightfully acknowledge that it's somewhat difficult having uh, one of these large windmills uh, sitting on the rooftop of an urban uh, building. So we are relying on photovoltaic, uh, which is available roughly 10% of uh, the time. Uh, so you needed to bring in something that is uh, untested for, for, for various reasons, which is geothermy. Maybe we succeed uh, in uh, provoking an earthquake uh, even uh, in the city of Kiel, uh, where it is used uh, some, some uh, frictions uh, in the earth are linked to it. So uh, I, I first, I challenge uh, the economic foundation uh, of that. Yeah? I think there is by far uh, a rough estimate, but by far, so my, my error margin can be large, and I'm, I'm still right, by far too few energy uh, in your system. Uh, and I challenge uh, second economic point. I think uh, it is brutally expensive. Uh, to work with these decentralized, uh, smaller installations, uh, ignoring or ruling out the large, powerful uh, plants. Uh, and furthermore, it seems to be a socialist uh, model. Uh, at least it relies heavily uh, on the state, yeah, asking for tax. That's not your fault. The entire Energiewende yeah, is, a large, is the largest subsidy uh, ever invented. Uh, we've committed 500 uh, billion uh, euros on that. Uh, and talking about the success of Energiewende with such large a subsidy is ridiculous. Give me the amount, call an industry, uh, and I've built a 30% market share in any industry you indicate. And so you're adding on top, we need uh, tax deductions, and you're, you're exploiting someone uh, who, if I think your model till the end, does not exceed anymore, uh, which is the public net uh, that comes out of the black. Yeah? Uh, at the end of the day, um, Germany is covered by your islands, but wh who is, what is the public energy supp uh, supply? And who compensates uh, for that? And under which conditions? That is already today extremely unfair. Uh, it means uh, this conventional energy may only be sold if there is not sufficient wind. Uh, so the large power plants can't, um, can't earn enough hours uh, to get break even. Uh, now they have been released from a regulation and the question is, what is uh, a kilowatt hour worth in case uh, the sun is not shining and your geothermy is not working? Thousand euro? Uh, so this, these things, yeah? Um, interesting model, uh, but severe doubts about the economic viability and the governance of the entire thing. Okay, thank you. You want to respond directly? Sure. Thank you. Um, first of all, the what? First of all, the actual goal of this is to get more.
companies or more big businesses into getting renewable energies. So this is, the problem is that whenever there's no one in the offices, the energy just goes away. So you have to give it up to the public power network. But at some point there's a time that there's too much energy in the, power, uh, in the public network means that they technically have to even pay for it to put their energy into it. And this is what we thought of is not the a good thing for the, for the businesses. So this could be like a solution for that. Mm -hmm. Anything to add? So, Professor Broeker has a comment on this? Yes. You have a microphone here. Mr. Ah, so. <laughs> yes, uh, first of all, I'm Thomas Brand and uh, uh, very thankful because you took the role of the underlying critic in the much more. So, I mean, what I would like very much is that you think about uh, the main problem of mankind, right? And that is burning fossil fuel. By the way, it's not the main problem of mankind because you don't have enough fossil fuels. I want to correct that. The problem is that you have too much of that. The, the earth is full of coal. And I just give you one information. If you dig that out and burn it, then you will heat up the ocean in such a way that even on the North Pole, you can open up above. I mean, you can you get 40 degrees of water temperature there. So the problem is, not to make the stuff up, right? And we have to find a way. And everyone who is aware of that and thinks about that, and put it here in school, I like that, right? But then comes the next point, and that's the so point that Torsten Benz mentioned. I mean, it has to be done in an efficient way. So, what did we learn in economics? Is a very small economy better than a large economy? Can a small economy like an island produce more efficient division of labor in space? No, it can't. I mean, a large economy, the European economy is integrated so it can work more efficiently because there are more options to change rather than a small one. So, let's make that concrete. If the wind blows in Schleswig-Holstein, people don't need all that energy, so you need exchange in space with southern Germany to feed that in into the public grid in order to live it to them. Let's take another example. If there is no wind in our area, then it would be nice if the Norwegians leave the water applicable, take our wind energy and, and, and some of the other way around. So if there is no wind here, then they should take the water applicable and let it flow down. And if there's wind here, they should leave it up the hill and buy the energy from us. So that's all through the public grid, even the long distance public grid. And these things are only possible if you don't cut islands out of the system, but if you use the efficiency gain which you have through interregional exchange. So one of my fields of research is interregional trade. And of course, I'm a fan of interregional trade, and a particular fan of interregional trade and energy. So, we can also pose the question concrete. If you produce that energy and distribute it in your island, do you pay, pay for the feed in electricity charge? So, six pence per kilowatt hour for subsidizing the renewables. Do you pay for that or not? Right? I mean, produce, do you separate out and in your island you say, ah, oh, that's fine, I, need, I don't need to pay for the renewable energy because I don't pay the six cent for the Einstein thing. Do you pay for the long distance grid? Do you pay energy taxes that at least a little bit compensate for the fact that we're producing energy once for an environment? So, Probably you don't pay all these things. Instead, you want to get money for doing these things, right? And you need money for doing these things in your island only because you artificially cut the world through between your island and the rest of the world to the detriment of the efficiency of energy production and use. So, I end with one statement. 
what I think, what is the main thing that you need and what you think about. You don't think about energy storage or, or um, long distance grids and so forth. What you need to think about is flexibility of energy use. I mean, as Thorsten Grid said, a Thorsten, not grid. <laughs> smart grid, Thorsten <laughs> grid. <laughs> smart grid, smart grid. <laughs> what he said is, there may be situations where one kilowatt hour is worth 1,000 euros. Because, I mean, there is no wind, there is no sun, and so on and so forth. The most important thing is the same as I mentioned in the context of road traffic, urban transport. Prices have to show scarcity. That means if everybody sees that now the energy is very expensive, they begin thinking. They think, okay, I can use my electrical car and sell a little bit of the electricity that I have in my car to the grid. They think of installing a new lightning in their house, which is very low energy. They switch it off if energy is expensive. They switch it on if energy is cheap. Everywhere in the society, there are very many possibilities to produce flexibility. And flexibility means you buy that stuff Maybe electricity if it is very cheap. You probably even sell it if it is gas and very expensive. Mm -hmm. That's the market. Thank you. So, from a global infrastructure perspective, Hans Peter here. Yeah. Thank you. you uh, obviously, I, I have uh, follow uh, my predecessors in in in, the, in their speeches. I think what. Uh, however, could taken into consideration is the connectivity idea to have not uh, an island per se, but to try to do something in addition to the existing situation and add this and weave this in the whole system you have. So then you can really contribute and you, you are interlinked with the existing system. So having this as an island uh, is a little bit, to me also, quite uh, difficult to really follow in economics. And uh, we all know that particularly uh, energy has to be available, has to be uh, accessible to everybody at any time needed, uh, peak hours and low hours less, and the price will manage all the distribution of it. So I would uh, think, yes, if you think that these so-called islands could add to improve the current system and to have a, an approach which shows that this is really uh, feasible, then uh, why not uh, thinking a little bit more in it? But what I, to me, it's always difficult to understand the system in energy, which is the likely only. Uh, infrastructure project which is commercially viable is energy production. That's the easiest way to, to generate income. So why there the state should still support via subsidies, uh, tax reduction or whatsoever? This is a little bit difficult to, to really follow, uh, particularly in the energy production uh, view of point. So, uh, yeah, maybe taking it from that uh, position that you have uh, detected an, an, an issue which could contribute to a general problem. Why not link this into the existing, uh, existing system? Mm -hmm. Yeah, this would also be my question because uh, the the pro uh, like the the idea of smart grids is already a couple of years, maybe even decades old. Uh, but why Grid Island or why this? Because, because of resilience against blackouts or what were, were your thoughts? I think you did a lot of research on it and yeah. Um, so first I'd like to say to your comment that this is really just an addition to the normal mm -hmm. uh, grid. Um, and the second question, what was it again? Sorry. So why? Um, 
Grid Island and not Smart Grid as integrated in the in the grid, the normal grid. As so Smart Grid would be mentioned. without a business, right? Or what? No, smart, smart Grid means that. Yeah. Smart Grid, grid means that in the grid you have all the information to, I mean, to make demand and supply fit with one another, right? So, um, uh, for through prices, through regulation, or whatever. That means in a smart grid, you know at every place what is it used, when it is used, what is supplied, when it is supplied. Um, and so you can, I mean, stabilize the system and equalize. Uh, but of course, the possibility of, um, I mean, adjusting supply to, to demand are still limited if if the price mechanism don't work, doesn't work. But, but also for installing a good price mechanism, you need that information in the network. So all the things that you mentioned, I mean, not probably that much, right? But, but many information that you mentioned need to be available in the total grid, not just in an island, right? And in a grid, you can work with more aggregate information. I mean, you don't need to know of each and every person what he is in this moment doing, right? But what you need is at which time, at which place, energy is demanded and its energy is, is, is supplied, right? And the smart grid yeah, gathers all this information and processes all this information, but for the whole system. I mean, even Germany is too small for a smart grid, right? A smart grid has to be at least Europe because of the reasons I, I already mentioned. So that's what we dream of, the smart, European grid that, that processes all this information and uses it for, I mean, hopefully for a, mm -hmm. a CO2 reducing so kind of thing. So the point of smart grid got clear to you now? Yeah. 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 Okay. That's what you mentioned at the beginning, right, with the Norwegians and whenever there's energy that they give yeah, it to us and the other way around. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. But this, our idea is just to add, it means that uh, we want to, to convince the, the businesses to get renewable energy. This is our idea. We don't want to cut them off. The, 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 the island doesn't have to be cut off the normal grid. I may ask, if it is in the grid, do you pay for all these costs? For building the, the no, grid? just for the grid. I mean, if you're in the grid, you have to pay for the grid. You have to pay in the well, island. Is that you're, I mean, the free rider position that you said, there's a nice grid, mm -hmm. somebody cares about that, if I don't need it, I don't use it, but if I want it, I access to it. <laughs> <laughs> My voice is loud enough. <laughs> <laughs> so it's a complete question. Because normal um, providers of energy or Consumers have to pay all these taxes and right. um, and so on. And the question would be if in the island grid, this is ha does this also have to be paid or not? Yeah, and of if, course. Or do they pay for the public grid? Yeah, for the, okay. So this so is the question. The point. Do they pay? So Torsten has mentioned the point, and uh, Torsten has mentioned the point that, that, I mean, you say I don't need the grid if I have enough, right? But then, sometimes I have more than I want to use, so I feed that into the grid. Sometimes I have less, I take that out of the grid. So you want to have the option to be connected to the grid. But then, do you pay also for that option? I mean, if you pay for that, right, then you have to pay the Einspeisevergütung, then you have to pay the taxes, then you have to pay for providing that grid. Providing a grid which is must be much bigger than the traditional grid because it has to cover all the energy that goes to the system if the wind blows, right? Not just the average, but the peaks. And who pays for that? If you have an island, you say the others pay. We call that free riding, right? And if you have an incentive for that, if it works, others have, have as well. We already have that islands. For example, the ferries in the harbor of Kiel. What are they doing? They co connect to the network, but they don't. They produce energy, electrical energy, much less efficient than the public network. They produce it less efficient, but it's cheaper for them because they don't pay for all these other things. So they have such an island, right? And this island 
if there are many such islands, you destroy the overall system. Mm -hmm. and that's okay. what Thorsten Thorsten Grenz Grenz can comment on this already. Yeah, I'm, I'd like to try something something different uh, because you must be wondering uh, what is happening. Yeah? Heavy flood from all sides. Um, and in fact, uh, I think the panel uh, you're facing and the uh, subject uh, you have chosen uh, is the most demanding, at least uh, the one I have seen. Uh, you have a very um, profiled uh, position, which is uh, contrary um, to conventional wisdom. And you have, got, you have got three specialists who know about uh, this market uh, in depth. So I hopefully um, the rest of your team has taken notes uh, about the critical points uh, that uh, were brought up. Uh, some uh, points are absolutely valid, and you've been stressing it again and again, saying uh, add on. Yeah? How can you incentivize uh, photovoltaic on rooftops? Uh, that the stuff comes in, uh, is it privileged uh, to the extent uh, if you use your own energy, it's a big debate uh, right now, and uh, there are some privileges in there. If you produce your own renewable energy, do you contribute to the system or uh, you do, do you not contribute uh, to the system? This free rider thing, uh, it's full of lobbyism. Uh, the photovoltaic people are very, very strong and they need to be strong because um, I'm blunt to say it, it's an unusable uh, technology uh, in Germany. Uh, it delivers less than 1,000 hours full capacity uh, per year, and the year is 8,760. 8, so photovoltaic without storage or direct use, uh, what you have been pointing it, yeah, uh, is a very, very weak technology. Uh, I think um, you're in the midst of a very important and extremely complicated uh, case you have chosen. This deserves highest credit. Um, and uh, at least uh, either your team or a, su a succeeding team in, uh, next year uh, needs to take up the critical issues, uh, choose one, two, three, and drive them further. Mm -hmm. uh, it is, uh, and unfortunately, or fortunately, I would say, uh, you are facing three experts. Thank you for the experts. We are now opening um, the, the round for the audience questions. And I would also have some comments that maybe can um, proceed in the, in, the, in the discussion afterwards and also for your project. Um, and I would invite the experts too to uh, mention maybe one to three points where, to, where is it worth, in your opinion, to further think about for the group. So my comments would be um, what I thought about when I saw your presentation. Um, Municipal utilities means Stadtwerke. There are around 900 in Germany. They play a key role here or in the Energiewende in general, but also when it comes to, to grids. So maybe it's uh, interesting to ask them or one in your city for their opinion on this idea of, um, of island grids. Um, Second, producer and consumer are in, when it comes to the energy vendor, con prosumers are becoming producers and consumers in the meantime, and that's why also um, something like the, the grid island can, can function. Yeah? So um, there are several platforms that bring them together already regionally, like for example, Basen. So maybe talk to them, what are their experiences already? Uh, and also partners and maybe, yeah, for, for having a talk like Projekt Kommunal Erneuerbar or Project 100% Erneuerbare Energieregionen. They have a lot of ideas on this and maybe can help to think further here. So now the questions for the, from the, for the public is open. Um, five minutes left, okay. In the back, please, hand the microphone over. Yeah, um, I really like your presentation, first of all, even though it got a bit criticized at, <laughs> after all. Um, maybe you cannot answer the question, um, and I would like to leave out the criticism from the experts on the front, but have you any calculations on um, when the concept would be profitable um, from a monetary point of view, not from a, from a sustainable 
um, point of view for the investors and for the households and so on. Um, I would say we don't really have exact numbers because every island is, or we thought every island is different and for um, every island there is, it's other way. Like um, if the if the business is the owner of the island, for example, then um, they have to pay like for everything and then um, when they receive like state funding uh, for like the solar cells or whatever and they uh, would receive or do a motorization so um, it will be prof I would not say profitable but um, well. reduce the expenses yeah, yeah okay. definitely okay yeah mm -hmm. thank you one last question and then the the final comments of the commentators here in the front. Yeah. Um, yeah. First of all, I would like to congratulate you on your um, new idea. I've never heard of something like that before. But um, my question connects to um, the previous question. Um, if the businesses are the owners of the solar cells and they get the money from the households, um, I, as a um, citizen of Kiel, wouldn't um, really want to participate in that because the businesses could raise um, the prices on the energy however they want. Is there some kind of an institution that would control the price because um, with that it would create kind of um, monopole situations for the businesses? Um, we have a pretty simple answer to that because um, the energy that's in the grid that the businesses are providing, they have to be, or it has to be cheaper than it ha has to be from the public grid. So, like, people want to participate. Um, but then, what's the point in um, having solar cells um, on on those houses if um, it has to be cheaper than the public grid? Um, I, I don't really understand the need for it then, because um, if it's um, more expensive than the public grid, of course I would go to the public grid, but then it's so cheap that the businesses won't really profit from it, so nobody would do it. Yeah, it's, it's cheaper than the, the, from the energy from the public grid, but still, if you are a business and you have the surplus energy, for you, you don't get a lot of money out of it if you put it into the public grid. And this is so it's for both sides profit uh, means that the households have to pay less for the energy but also the the, the um, businesses get more money out of it because they don't have to put it in the public grid and for, to your um, first question those the price for it has to be in the energy corporation contracts as i mentioned in the presentation okay thank you so I invite the experts to have uh, your one to three, maximum three, um, expert consultancy steps for the, for the next steps, for the way to, to go on further with this project. And I invite Dr. Mr. Egler to, to begin, please. Yes, I would actually take uh, the idea, basic idea and check what is happening internationally on these areas. Is there anything happening? Uh, similar in, I don't know, outside of Europe to get a little bit refreshed ideas to check how we could uh, have an add-on to the existing net. Uh, but it has to be really something which is uh, very well integrated into the, into the existing system. Otherwise, and I would even leave the, the word island away. This sounds to me a little bit too isolated. So I would create something more uh, which shows that it is an add-on, an add-on idea, which you can also, which can attract the interest of businesses because they finally have to be attracted. Thank you. Uh, conceptually, focus. 
uh, narrow um, your, your, your issues, uh, follow only a couple uh, like, like uh, this one on that. I heard there's something going on in New York City. Uh, you should, you should uh, research that. Idea from my side, uh, maybe go to the extreme. Um, stay with the island uh, idea and drill it down to the individual households. Uh, work uh, on, an, uh, on a house owner to, to get uh, these, these uh, difficulties with rent and all that uh, out. How much energy uh, can you produce uh, as, a, as an owner uh, of, uh, of an house? Because then uh, an island, uh, as big as it may be, uh, is a multiplication uh, of that. And uh, then you will see uh, how much do you rely on the public grid? Uh, if it's the lion's share, uh, it's a big question mark for your entire uh, project uh, work. If you build in energy storage, which may work uh, for individual houses better uh, than for large um, uh, volume of energy uh, in the public grid, then there may be something. Uh, try to design it bottom up uh, from an individual uh, house. Mm -hmm. Thank you. So the one minute sign was shown one minute ago. <laughs> we keep on. Yes. So, I want to add on this. I have a suggestion how to proceed from that time. Choose as your subject the flexible prosumer. And the flexible prosumer is one, imagine a situation where the energy price varies that you pay as a household or that you get as a household. From minus 10 cent per kilowatt hour, minus 10 cent means you get 10 cent if you deliver. Up to, say, 400 euro per kilowatt hour. And then think of the smart prosumer. How would he get? What could he do in his bathroom, in his basement, with his car, with his roof, with his garden, with everything? You will find so many things where the prosumer could adjust to the fluctuating energy prices. And the point is, renewable energies fluctuate. I mean, that's just a fact of nature. We can't escape from that. And if we want to do everything with renewable energy, we have to learn how to cope with fluctuating scarcity or prices. And we need a lot of creativity in that. Please conclude that. Mm -hmm. Thank you, yeah. Excellent, yeah. There is actually... Thank you. There's actually um, a startup uh, it's a joint venture of uh, BMW and Fisman, a startup called Digital Energy Solutions, which, with, which is handling exactly this, uh, the flexibility market. And this is very interesting well, to proceed on. I thank you very much for your plans and your ideas. And it needs those plans, those plan Bs, because there is no planet B. So thank you very much and also for the comments.